Today we are studying the cerebrum, its sulca and gyri and the functional areas. The cerebrum is made up of two cerebral hemispheres which are incompletely separated from each other by the median longitudinal fissure. The two hemispheres are connected to each other across the median plane by the corpus callosum. Now we will see the cerebral hemisphere, its external features. Each hemisphere shows the following features. First beginning with the surfaces. It shows three surfaces, superolateral surface, the medial surface and the inferior surface. Superolateral surface is convex and is related to the cranial vault. The medial surface is flat and vertical. It is separated from the corresponding surface of the opposite hemisphere by the flux cerebri and the longitudinal fissure. The inferior surface is irregular. It is divided into an anterior part, the orbital surface, and the posterior part the tentorial surface. The two parts are separated by a deep cleft called the stem of lateral sulcus. Now the borders. It shows four borders. Superomedial border, inferolateral border, medial orbital border and the medial occipital border. The superomedial border separates the superolateral surface from the medial surface. Inferolateral border separates the superolateral surface from the inferior surface. The anterior part of this border is called the superciliary border. There is a depression on the inferolateral border situated about 5 cm in front of the occipital pole. It is called the preoccipital notch. Medial orbital border separates the medial surface of from the orbital surface. Medial occipital border separates the medial surface from the tentorial surface. Now seeing the poles, the cerebral hemisphere presents three poles. The frontal pole at the anterior end, the occipital pole at the posterior end, and the temporal pole at the anterior end of the temporal lobe. Now the lobes of the cerebral hemisphere. Each cerebral hemisphere is divided into four lobes. Frontal, parietal, occipital and the temporal lobes. Their positions correspond very roughly to that of the corresponding bones. The lobes are best appreciated on the superolateral surface. The sulci separating these lobes on the surface are as follows. The central sulcus. This sulcus begins at the superomedial border of the cerebral hemisphere, a little behind the midpoint between the frontal and the occipital poles. It runs on the superolateral surface obliquely downwards and forwards and ends a little above the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus. To identify the central sulcus, one should keep in mind that the upper end of the sulcus extends for a short distance on the medial surface. Now the lateral sulcus, this sulcus separates the orbital and the tentorial parts of the inferior surface. Laterally, this sulcus reaches the superolateral surface where its posterior ramus of this sulcus passes backwards 
and slightly upwards over the superolateral surface. The parieto occipital sulcus. This is seen on the medial surface. Its upper end cuts off the superior medial border about 5 cm in front of the occipital pole. The preoccipital notch is an indentation on the inferolateral border about 5 cm in front of the occipital pole. The division is completed by drawing one line joining the parieto occipital sulcus to the preoccipital notch and the another line continuing backwards from the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus to meet the first line. Now we will see the lobes now. So the area in front of the central sulcus and above the posterior ramus is the frontal lobe. Area behind the central sulcus and in front of the parieto occipital sulcus is the parietal lobe. And the area between the parieto occipital and the preoccipital notch forms the occipital lobe. And the area between, sorry, below the posterior ramus and the preoccipital notch is the temporal lobe. Now we will see the sulci and gyri on the superolateral surface. The central sulcus has already, already been discussed. Now we will see the frontal lobe which is further divided by the sulci into various gyri. First beginning with the precentral sulcus. This runs parallel to the central sulcus, a little in front of it. So the precentral gyrus lies between these two sulci. Area in front of the precentral sulcus is divided into three gyri, that is the superior, middle, and the inferior gyri, frontal gyri by the superior and the inferior frontal sulcus, the sulci. Further, the inferior frontal gyri is divided by the anterior horizontal and the anterior ascending rami of the lateral sulcus into three parts that is pars orbitalis, pars triangularis and pars opercularis. Now we will see the parietal lobe. The post central sulcus runs parallel to the central sulcus a little behind it. The post central gyrus lies between these two sulci. Now the area behind the post central gyrus is divided into two lobules that is the superior and inferior parietal lobules by the intraparietal sulcus. The inferior parietal lobule is further invaded by the posterior ramus of lateral sulcus. This divides the inferior parietal lobule into two parts. The anterior part is called the supramarginal gyrus and the middle part is the angular gyrus. Now the temporal lobe, two sulci that is the superior 
and inferior temporal sulci divides the temporal lobe into three gyri that is the superior middle and inferior temporal gyri the occipital lobe is divided by the three sulci the lateral occipital sulcus divides the lobe into superior and inferior occipital gyri and the lunate sulcus separates these gyri from the occipital lobe now we'll see the subdivisions on the medial surface the central part of the medial aspect of the hemisphere is occupied by the corpus callosum the corpus callosum is divided into genu that is the anterior end the body and the splenium that is the posterior end it is made up of nerve fibers connecting the two cerebral hemisphere now the sulci which are seen on the medial surface the cingulate sulcus this sulcus starts in front of the genu and runs backwards parallel to the upper margin of corpus callosum its posterior end reaches the superomedial border a little behind the upper end of central sulcus the subparietal sulcus it lies above and behind the splenium the calcarine sulcus it begins a little below the splenium and runs towards the occipital pole it gives off the parieto occipital sulcus which reaches the superolateral surface now we'll see the gyri on this medial surface the cingulate gyrus it lies between the corpus callosum and the cingulate sulcus its posterior part is bounded above by the suprasplenial sulcus the u shaped gyrus around the end of the central sulcus is the paracentral lobule it is usually limited posteriorly by the upturned end of the cingulate sulcus and in front by a branch of the same sulcus the area between the gyrus cinguli and the superomedial border in front of the paracentral lobule is called the medial frontal gyrus the contrangular area between the supraspleneal gyrus and the superomedial border is called the precuneus the triangular area between the parieto occipital sulcus above and the calcarine sulcus below is called the cuneus a narrow strip between the splenium and the stem of calcarine sulcus is the isthmus the para olfactory gyrus lies between the anterior and posterior para olfactory sulci 
Now we'll see the sulci and gyri on the orbital surface. Parallel to the medial orbital border, there is the olfactory sulcus. Between them, there is the gyrus rectus. The rest of the orbital surface is subdivided by an H-shaped sulcus into anterior, posterior, medial and lateral orbital gyri. The stem of the lateral sulcus lies deep between the temporal lobe and the orbital surface. Now the sulci and gyri on the tentorial surface. This area presents two sulci running anteroposteriorly. The medial one is the collateral sulcus. And the lateral is the occipitotemporal sulcus. On the medial side of the temporal pole, there is the rhinal sulcus. The gyri seen here are the part medial to the rhinal sulcus is the uncus. The part medial to the collateral sulcus is the parahippocampal gyrus. Its posterior part is limited medially by the calcarine sulcus. It is joined to the cingulate gyrus through the isthmus. The part lateral to the collateral sulcus is divided into medial and lateral occipitotemporal gyri by the occipitotemporal sulcus. Now we will see the functional areas into the next video.